Hi, uh, so my name is Jesse Damone. I'm the program coordinator and a professor in the graphic design program. And uh, I'm so happy that you're here. And uh, let's talk about the graphic design program. Uh, feel free to let us know about any questions um, along the way, and uh, we'll kind of walk you through it. Uh, so design is thinking made visual, and that's really what we do. We create visual solutions to, uh, to creative problems. And uh, yeah. um, so this is uh, the, the program overview. These are the courses that you'll take um, throughout your time at Niagara College. And um, the first two terms or the first year of the program is really uh, building that foundation. So we have students coming in uh, to the program um, with a variety of different kind of levels of experience. And so we ensure that everybody has the, uh, the base and the foundation so that when they move into terms three and four, uh, second year, they have um, uh, every, all the skills that they need so that they can really explore the different kind of niche areas of design, like information design, package design, web design, um, editorial magazine design, um, book design, motion graphics, branding and corporate identity, um, and all of those types of, of things. Um, for, and then when you move into, after you've kind of had an opportunity to explore all those different um, niche areas, you'll move into terms five and six, your third year. And that's where you get to kind of say, you know what, I'm really passionate about this. And so I'd like to um, spend some time exploring that further and building your portfolio um, to support kind of your, your uh, uh, kind of career uh, goals as you move um, kind of uh, towards graduation. Uh, we have uh, professional practice where we'll be teaching entrepreneurial skills and all of the ins and outs of running um, a design business, as well as uh, continuing with web design, uh, planning your grad show and building your portfolio, and also looking at social media marketing as that is an important uh, aspect of, uh, of all kind of communication and advertising um, now. Um, so our class size is small, um, and that's something that we really appreciate. Our labs can only hold 25 students max, uh, so we tend to find that um, our class size is approximately 20 students, um, and that's really important to us because even, um, uh, even with 20 students, all of our instructors like to spend uh, as much time as possible with each student so we can get to know you, so we can get to know what it is you're interested in and work one-on-one -on -one with you. Um, so by not moving uh, to become a laptop program, we have ensured that our class sizes stay small. And that's, uh, that's something that uh, we really enjoy. Uh, we get to know our students, we get to be kind of, you know, part of their, their journey throughout the program. And, uh, and uh, really ensure that everyone gets the uh, the help, the attention, and the feedback that they um, that they need. We do use the Creative Suite. We use the Adobe Creative Suite. So you're looking at Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign um, as the kind of the primary programs that you would use. We do have students coming in from all different uh, backgrounds. Some people would have had a lot of experience with the programs in high school um, or, you know, in other avenues of their life. Other people may be brand new to the software. So in the first year, we have an applications course um, in the first and second term so that you'll get an opportunity to really learn the programs. There's nothing more frustrating than knowing what you want to create and not being able to create that. So we, um, we make sure that everyone has the technical know-how to create all of their um, kind of creative ideas. So um, we are also um, RGD members. So all of our students become RGD members. They're, um, they're student RGD members. And so RGD is the Registered Graphic Designers. It's our body of accreditation and an association that supports uh, professionals in the graphic design field. And uh, so in addition to providing a, a handbook that is uh, very useful throughout, uh, throughout your time in the program and beyond as you kind of uh, discover the process of, of freelancing and, uh, and even um, in entrepreneurship. Uh, the RGD also offers a number of webinars, events, and uh, all sorts of kind of programs that can really um, enhance your time while you're in the program and continue to support you after graduation. Uh, for example, right now we're getting ready for students to submit their work to the, um, to the RGD Student Awards. 
And so all of our students are able to, um, to submit their work uh, to, the, to the awards. Uh, there's no charge because our, our students are RGD members and there's you know, thousands of dollars up for grabs, but major recognition uh, to be gained. So uh, we're really excited about that. They also offer uh, portfolio reviews where you'll have members from industry uh, reviewing your portfolios and giving you feedback on your work before you even graduate. So um, a really great uh, association that we're proud to be part of. Um, so we have a video here from one of our Niagara College students. Uh, this is Patrick. He's in the third year, uh, so his last semester of the graphic design program. A year prior to coming to Niagara College, I visited the campus and instantly got captivated by its looks and its atmosphere, and I knew I wanted to go there. I love being an NC student because besides the fact that I get a great education at Niagara College, the environment at being in campus and being an NC student is just wonderful. You would go up and down the stairs and you'd hear someone playing the various pianos that are in the school. And, and when you're having a tough day, just hearing someone play just uplifted your spirits and hearing people laugh and having a great time at school is just a wonderful environment to be part of. As an international student, I feel supported by the international division as well as by my professors. They're always just an email away to answering your questions. And when we're allowed to have classes in campus, you could just drop in and ask your questions and they will be always willing to help you. Niagara College did a great job at transitioning to online learning. As I am a graphic designer student, it was great experience to learn how to work from home in remote learning and also as a freelancer designer where you're just emailing back to back and having video calls which before weren't at standard but now they are and this was just great experience to have and the transition was well executed all right so patrick is as i mentioned a third year student who's about to graduate so if, um so the next thing i'd like to kind of walk you through is some of the things that our recent grads are up to uh, so this is Sean O'Melia. He graduated in 2014, um, and his career has taken him, before he graduated, uh, he was already hired uh, about two weeks before graduation. He was hired by West 49, which was the perfect uh, position for him, uh, as he is an avid skateboarder. Um, after working for West 49 for a while, he kind of outgrew his position there, moved to Boathouse, um, worked there for a little while before um, looking for new challenges and he moved to Cinnamon Toast. Um, and now he's currently uh, operating his own business, uh, working independently. Um, also after graduation, he founded his, a second company, a passion project uh, called Daydream Skateboards. And so you can see some of uh, his boards and some of the, uh, the swag and the hoodie, for example, that he's wearing there that he's created. Uh, while at Cinnamon Toast, he had um, the opportunity to work on this project. This was the logo for Beverly McLaughlin, Chief Justice, celebrating her 17 years um, on the Supreme Court. And uh, so you can see here um, a really proud moment for Sean and, uh, and for uh, his professors who, uh, who have seen him grow as a, as a designer from, you know, coming in as a student and then uh, kind of getting the opportunity to follow his career. Uh, so here is uh, his logo projected up on the big screen uh, with Justin Trudeau and then Beverly McLaughlin um, speaking in front of it. Uh, Sean has also been um, through a bit of a competitive process. Sean was also selected to be the designer of the Canada Summer Games 2021 medals. So uh, we are super proud of him and uh, very excited to see what those medals look like. It's, uh, it's being kept uh, very secret. And uh, so we look forward to the big reveal that's uh, coming up soon. Uh, Alicia Lorenz graduated in 2015 and she has had a wonderful career working at Sun Life Financial. So kind of a different approach, uh, working in a very corporate environment. Um, and that's the beautiful thing about graphic design is that uh, it, uh, it really touches all industries. So there's no limit to, to where you can work or uh, what industry you can work in. And uh, yeah. Cody Thompson is working for the uh, Ontario government. He's working for the MTO. So uh, all signage systems go through him. 
Um, and then in addition to his, his day job, he also does a lot of uh, freelance work for bands and, uh, you know, musical music uh, uh, promotions. And uh, so, for example, there's a kind of a small image there that is a um, uh, an album design that he did that was recognized by Stereo Gum in their top 50 albums of 2020. Uh, Megan Hendricks, after graduation, she uh, went to work for the Brock University Student Union as a graphic designer um, in-house there. And uh, so she worked there for a few years before uh, finding that uh, uh, she had outgrown her position and now she's working at Loud and Clear um, in an agency environment. Shane Saxton, he graduated in 2018 and uh, he recently won the first place uh, user interface award at the Ubisoft Next competition. And if we go to the next screen, you can see his interface design. And so again, um, graphic design lends itself to so many different uh, avenues um, that you can see kind of a, a lot of diversity in the work that our grads have done over the past uh, years. Uh, Aaron Sanders graduated in 2019 and he's working for Pillatory Estates Winery. Um, it's a great fit for a Niagara College grad as we have the uh, wineries, the breweries, uh, and all sorts of different um, uh, cannabis programs, greenhouse programs, uh, culinary programs. So there's a lot of opportunity for the graphic design students to work with various programs throughout the college. Uh, and we've often done work with uh, different wineries in the area. Uh, so Aaron is uh, in a very comfortable environment <laughs> uh, that he's uh, been enjoying for the past uh, almost two years now uh, at Wallet Pillatory. Uh, Gopika graduated in 2020. And despite graduating in the midst of a uh, pandemic, uh, she's had um, a wonderful freelance career uh, working for uh, McKnight Inclusive Design. Uh, she's been hired by NC SAC as the um, in-house designer there. She's also working as the social media designer for Crazy D's Social, uh, sorry, Crazy D's Soda Labs and uh, doing some really incredible work and um, has been very busy. <laughs> so uh, we do keep in touch with all of our grads and often we find that um, a lot of uh, companies will reach out to us looking to hire. So it's great that we can pass that work on to our, um, to our recent grads and help them gain that experience outside of school. So just some examples of some student work. So as I mentioned, because we are so fortunate to have a winery on campus, a brewery on campus, a distillery on campus and so forth. Uh, we've done a lot of work um, collaborating, having our students collaborate with students from other programs. So for example, um, what you're seeing here is our students working with the viticulture students, the marketing students and the, uh, the I believe it's called the, the wine business uh, program. And uh, so this was the winning label uh, that was selected as we kind of had a, a mini competition. All the students were compensated for their, for their work during this time. And um, so Christina, who is the graphic designer in this project, uh, her, her label design went on to win gold from the Ontario uh, uh, Wine Awards. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, in addition to working with um, our own winery, uh, we've also worked um, with various wineries in the area, including Pillatory. Uh, so Pillatory approached the, uh, the program with some uh, kind of an interesting uh, criteria. They wanted to launch a product uh, that was gonna be sold in duty-free shops around the world. They wanted to represent Canada. They wanted it to be very, you know, um, upscale and really reflect their ice wines. Uh, so this was the, so we had students um, who were again paid to participate and uh, create their, um, their various uh, concepts. And this was the winning concept called memoir. Uh, so you would, uh, you know, so use this wine to celebrate um, special kind of moments in your, in your life. And here's some of the branding collateral that kind of reinforces that you can see kind of the, the writing on the bottle uh, to, to recognize that memory. 
Uh, this was a project where students were, were challenged to take an existing product and turn it into something new. And so the student took uh, old skateboard decks and turned them into uh, use the wood to create pencil crayons. And the layering of the decks created this beautiful pattern on the outside of the pencil crayons. And uh, so a nice kind of upcycling. Uh, here we also have um, uh, we're also very supportive of submitting our students' work to, um, to awards and competitions such as Applied Arts. So the Applied Arts is kind of Canada's um, graphic design uh, media art magazine. And so um, this was the winning digital illustration. Um, it actually won two Applied Arts Awards for uh, editorial and digital, digital illustration that year. Um, so the student had created a beautiful David Bowie uh, illustration. Um, an incredibly challenging assignment. Uh, the student was asked, or, or the class, this uh, project, uh, the students were asked to redesign an existing brand. And so um, the challenge of taking something that's so well known and, and modifying it um, to maintain some of its um, original equity um, while also kind of uh, really taking it into in a new direction. Uh, the student really did a great job and in, in kind of re um, re envisioning uh, Petro Canada. Um, as I mentioned, we have the portfolio and exhibition course. And in that course, students plan and uh, um, and host their uh, their graphic design uh, grad show. And so this is a year end celebration of all of their hard work over the past three years. So here's some of the branding from uh, one of the shows. Here's another example. And here we are at the Tag Art Gallery where you know, we have industry uh, and then friends and family, of course, coming in to check out all of the wonderful work that, uh, that you do. Um, another student win at uh, in Applied Arts Magazine. Uh, we also have the opportunity again to work with uh, not only the winery, but the brewery. Uh, so here's just an example of uh, a student's uh, collaboration with a brewing student to develop packaging for, um, for the brew brewing student's uh, uh, beer. And uh, this was submitted and won an Applied Arts Packaging Design Award. Another award-winning uh, design, this was the uh, book design uh, created uh, uh, in, uh, or by Megan, who was one of the grads that I showed you earlier. Uh, and so this was uh, her, um, her uh, book design that won the Applied Arts Award. Uh, whenever possible, we do work um, and try to provide as many experiential learning opportunities. Um, so in this case, students were, um, challenged to develop a t-shirt for Autism Niagara. And then the winning design was printed and, and t-shirts were sold to raise funds for the organization. Uh, just some examples of editorial design. So in second year, um, students take the editorial design class and they'll produce a complete magazine, um, completely original. Uh, you'll come up with the idea and then you will um, execute the full book. So a pretty exciting project. Um, another example of some experiential learning, uh, Rose City Kids approached our program about, uh, about rebranding a space in their, um, in their facility called the Woodshed. And so this was um, one of the concepts that came out of that process. And here's just kind of carrying through that collateral to, you know, signage um, on, on the coffee cups and so forth. Um, we've also had, the, had an opportunity to work with uh, Crazy D's uh, prebiotic soda. As I mentioned, Go Pika, our 2021, sorry, our 2020 grad is, uh, is currently working with Crazy D's. And so um, that was really great that we had, you know, this client come in to, um, to the school to work with us during the year and then uh, hired one of our grads um, right out of graduation. Um, so here's some of the different can designs that students um, developed. The, uh, the company was looking to transition from bottles to cans. And uh, so the students were tasked with creating uh, a new can design. And just a few more examples to show you kind of the diversity and the, um, all of the great work that uh, our students came up with. 
Uh, this year we paired with Hill Street uh, Beverages to work on uh, their new product, which is a cannabis infused um, beverage. And so here you can see just some uh, point of sale displays, as well as some uh, shelf tags uh, for the brand that, uh, that the students created. Uh, and there's a cooler wrap and then carrying um, the, the branding through to the website. Um, just an example of, so um, one of the thesis projects, a student uh, decided to take on um, developing a Tamil typeface. Uh, so she did both a Tamil and Latin typeface, and this is the, uh, the type specimen that accompanied that typeface. And here is the thesis book that accompanied that project. Um, so kind of um, capturing the process to develop that thesis uh, project. Um, we do a lot of branding um, throughout the course. And so in second year, you take a course called Corporate Identity where you uh, create a company and create the brand. Uh, so here is uh, Netta who is um, a jewelry designer in, in, in Thailand. And uh, so she created a, um, a jewelry company with an, a logo that works in both English and Thai. And uh, here's just some pages from her brand book. Um, uh, another example of a brand book, this is for uh, um, a company, sorry, a duty-free shop um, that uh, would really kind of take you around, you know, give you kind of an experience of Columbia um, right in the airport. Um, another branding project here, um, Patrick, the student that you saw in the video, this was his piece. Um, originally from uh, Brazil, he wanted to create an architecture firm um, that uh, would exist in both um, Canada and Brazil, and he called it Banana Architecture. And uh, so you can see just some of the pages and mock-ups of, um, of his branding project. And here is a variety of different projects, uh, everything from some corporate identity, stamp design, package design, posters, information design, and so forth. There's no shortage of amazing work uh, to show you. We could, <laughs> we, we, have, we, we need a lot more time. Um, so again, some book design, magazine design, packages, web design. Uh, we also have held our, um, our own Niagara College uh, graphic design design-a-thon. Uh, it was a really great uh, project and just kind of a, a fun event that students could participate in. Um, if they, you know, had time and and uh, and wanted to, uh, and so we provided the client and lots of food and uh, students designed for twelve hours straight to develop uh, new packaging uh, for the client. So I'm just going to show you the before, and so this was the the client was called Seventy Below Treats, and this was their their packaging and logo. And so our students spent twelve hours uh, working in teams developing new packaging ideas. And then the next, and so here was one of the solutions that they came up with, um, identifying each flavor with these icons and reimagining the logo as well. And another variation there as well. So some really different ideas. We have also, um, we're just in the final stages of completing our, um, our maker's space. So we have some incredible presses uh, that we have obtained. We have um, tons of type, 3D printers, um, uh, sorry, oh, large format plotters. We can print on virtually any sub, uh, substrate that you can think of. Um, all of that type of stuff. So we're really excited to have that open um, and uh, so that students like you can create virtually anything. So not only are you, um, you know, developing your ideas on the computer, but then you can actually make those tangible goods and, uh, you know, hold them and, uh, and uh, interact with them. So that's a really great uh, part of that. So if you wanna to go to the next slide, um, you can just see some of the images of, of our presses. So offering all sorts of different opportunities to really um, create incredible um, you know, printed materials. And uh, 
I'm oh, sorry if you could go back one more. And just we're really excited about the the possibility of really merging old and new technology. Um, if you happen to watch the the virtual tour, um, I, I do try to touch on this in there. But um, you know everything from taking you know our 3D printer and creating um, and creating your own your own type there, and then bringing it over into uh, these old presses, uh, which is a, a technology that has never changed um, you know, over hundreds of years and, and kind of really merging that old and new. And I think um, we've really seen such a, a, a newfound respect, I suppose, for, um, for you know, making things by hand and, uh, and really kind of getting, um, going kind of through that process. If you, you know, think about a lot of the things that are on Etsy and so forth. And um, so the fact that we can do silk screen printing, we can be um, letterpress printing and we can be doing all of these different things um, is, uh, yeah, is really, really fantastic. Um, so we're, we're super excited about that. And uh, and can't wait to get back in the building <laughs> to uh, to start to play. Um, Be World Ready. So um, Maxine Semple is is here from Be World Ready. And so in addition to uh, to class trips, we've had uh, numerous class trips to uh, to New York. We also have study abroad exchanges. Um, Megan, the uh, the grad that I had referenced uh, actually twice now, um, she's currently working at Loud and Clear. Uh, and she also, that was her book of the Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe that won the Applied Arts Award. Uh, she did, she along with another student did the, uh, did an exchange to Cork, Ireland. So they attended uh, the Cork Institute and uh, had a really phenomenal experience. So if you have any questions about um, international study or uh, different trips that are offered, there's also a number of different uh, trips that are made available um, throughout the year. Uh, Maxine is here to answer any of your questions about that. Uh, so this is the 2021 uh, graphic design virtual grad show. So this year, uh, due to the pandemic, we are uh, we are having our grad show online. And um, I would love to invite all of you if you're able to attend. Um, uh, that would be fantastic. Um, the I've uh, submitted my, or sorry, at the end of this presentation, my email is there as well as our Instagram. Um, and so if you want to reach out in either format, I can, I'll send you the information so that you can register and we'll send you out your swag um, because we've got some good goodies uh, for all attendees to the grad show. And, uh, and overall, I think the opportunity to see all of the work that the students are creating would be um, a really wonderful experience. It's a great way for industry to get to see all of our students work. Um, we've had industry um, attend over the years and um, for them, it's an opportunity to, um, you know, to see all of our grads portfolios kind of in one shot and really kind of say, okay, there is the student that uh, I want to hire. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so um, it can be a really kind of inspiring time. It's a celebration of all of their hard work and we'd love it if you can attend. Um, and so our Instagram handle is nc underscore graphic design. And if you go to our Instagram, you can see uh, work that has been done by all of our grads. Um, it's a relatively uh, new account. So we're constantly updating it and populating it with new work. Um, and uh, we'd love to kind of show you what our grads and uh, our current students are up to. So thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, all of your time this morning. It's been wonderful to, uh, to chat with you. Hey, everybody. Um, I do have a question um, in the Q&A that I am not quite prepared to answer. So um, Emily just asked, um, how did the program work this past year? What does it mean by not a laptop program? And does she have to get a laptop? And she would like to know how she signs up to attend the grad show we were just talking about. Okay, perfect. Um, so actually, if you go to the next slide, um, my email address is there. Uh, so if you, if you uh, can send me an email. Um, likewise, if anyone has any other questions that you think of later, if you want to send me an email, um, at any point in time, I would love to hear from you. Um, but uh, if you can send me that email, I can get you the link to um, to sign up. Um, I might be able to throw it in the chat as well. 
Uh, in terms of being a laptop program, so um, by being a uh, not a laptop program, it means you actually do not have to have your own laptop. It means that when you go into our labs, they um, they are there are computers there. So our labs have uh, 25 uh, Macs in each lab, and we have um, we have three uh, open access labs. I think Alicia is here, and she. Um, uh, Typically, she is the is the one that takes the students to New York um, on the oh, trip. So if anyone uh, has any questions about that, um, or if or if Alicia, if you want to uh, not to put you on the spot there, but if you want to kind of share any um, any thoughts on that, that would be wonderful. Um, can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, Thanks for coming out today. Welcome to Niagara College. Um, great job, Jesse. Um, Niagara College is just, we, we have so much to offer you. So in addition to our really, really um, strong design of a program, the transition from first year, second year, third year, um, and all the new fun toys that we have that uh, you saw, we also do, we also like to get our students out of the campus and away from the campus. So we do trips to um, Toronto and Hamilton to galleries and sometimes over to Buffalo. And for the last, I think nine years, I've been taking a group of students down to New York City for a week. Um, it usually falls now in the, uh, the break in the fall. And um, it's just an incredible experience for students to get to New York City, explore all the fine art galleries, design galleries. We go to Brooklyn and we visit as many studios as we can, depending on what's going on in the world. So um, if you're looking at coming in September, we're hoping, I'm hoping that at least by your third year, um, we'll be able to uh, get you down there for a trip. Um, everyone, I just saw Maxine uh, Sample is here. I work with Maxine hand in hand, um, or not hand in hand, beside, each, beside her. And it's Saturday and I'm tired. <laughs> um, and Maxine heads up the international department. And uh, so if any of you here are international students, um, you too can travel and Maxine and her team will take care of all your paperwork. And um, they, uh, Maxine and her team also help solidify and organize all the trips um, and to make sure that it's booked and you've got your insurance and the safety is foremost and important. Um, so I just wanted to kind of reiterate that. And she also has other trips available at the end of the semester. So Niagara College, we really do have so much to, uh, to offer you. Thanks. Thank you, Alicia. What Alicia is the creator of the New York trip. She has been so instrumental in offering these incredible opportunities to students within the School of Media, particularly in the graphic design program. So Alicia, we always say thank you to you for your innovative spirit and always uh, bringing these ideas forward. Alicia was talking about the other concepts for international field studies, which the New York field studies sits in. We were discussing an opportunity to Japan and Peru at one point. We had some discussions around an opportunity for Germany and Amsterdam, if I remember correctly, Alicia. And the Be World Ready program, along with the whole entire Niagara College uh, team, we are really looking forward to getting back out there when it is safe to do so. And that's the important, the important point at this, at this time. As Alicia mentioned, probably within your third year or maybe even into your second year, these Be World Ready opportunities, including the semester exchanges that Jesse had mentioned that students have gone on should be opened up to you again. And as Alicia pointed out, these are open to all students, regardless of where you are coming to Niagara from, whether you're a local student or an international student, you have the opportunity to take, we call it apply your dreams abroad in whatever way that is, if that's through short-term international field study to a destination such as New York or Japan or Peru, those are opportunities for you. If you would like to go on something a little bit longer for a semester exchange, for an example, that can happen in places like Ireland, as was mentioned before. So uh, myself, the international team, the Be World Ready team, we really do look forward to supporting you as, as future Niagara College students experiencing uh, international destinations and learning abroad, because 
as I'm sure Jesse, Alicia, Ian, and, and Pete on this call can share with you the incredible advantage that it that you would have in an international experience, and certainly from the creative perspective and design perspective, what you observe abroad, you will bring back into your work. There's no question about that. So Alicia, thank you for opening that up and, and the opportunity to speak about Be World Ready. We do hope that those of you who have joined us today that we'll be seeing you on future Be World Ready opportunities very soon. Um, yeah, there's. it's not all digital. I mean, unfortunately, most of it is right now with you know Zoom life and whatnot. Um, the Zoomiverse, which I thought I made up. Is that a thing? <laughs> um, but uh, most of it, most of your classes are going to have a lot of handwork with it as well. You'll do sketches or little like uh, thumbnail drawings leading up to your final work. So even though the final stuff for most of these projects that you're doing right now anyway, uh, end up digital, there's a lot of process work that kind of leads up to that. So all of your thoughts and kind of work leading up to it is all usually kind of done by hand. And if you prefer more like, um, I don't know, painting and stuff, you can incorporate that into most of your projects as well. So there's, there's a lot of ways you can kind of tie them together. And again, once life gets somewhat normal, you can really kind of get in there and use the physical equipment we have at the school with the entire silk screening setup, all the letterpress work. You can set up your artwork for, I don't know, making block prints and then cut it out using the Glowforge and then bring it over to one of the letterpress and run prints off that way too. There's a ton of options to keep things a little more analog with everything too. Yeah, and just to, to kind of follow up, thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate you coming out today and uh, we really hope to see you at the, uh, the grad show. So um, again, that the link for the grad show is in the chat there. Um, and if you register, we'll send out your uh, your swag. And then um, there's uh, some prizes that can be won at the actual event um, and uh, some um, amazing work to be seen. So uh, we'd love to have you there. OK, uh, Emily just asked a question. What is the schedule like? Um, I would say it you said kind of nine to four every day. Um, while we are on uh, line, um, that would probably be more would be would be accurate. Um, and it's probably usually students will find that they have one day a week um, where they don't have any classes. So you have kind of a time to uh, to do work. Um, or to work uh, as so we do have students that are working part-time, et cetera, while they're in school. Um, but we do sometimes, I'd say when we're back in the classroom, there may be times where you'll be working or where classes will be a little bit later. Um, they may run till, um, you know, we, we, we have had classes that kind of run outside of that. So um, maybe till, you know, um, we might have a class that maybe starts at 3.30 and goes till 6.30 or something like that. Um, but we are very co uh, co conscious of our schedules, trying to, um, you know, ensure that they kind of work for our students and, um, and kind of allow some flexibility with transportation and those types of things when we are on campus. Um, while, we're, while we're online, um, yeah, nine to four sounds, um, sounds about right. That uh, tends to be when our classes are running. Great, awesome. Thank you, everyone. This is the end of the session. Please enjoy the rest of your sessions and open house. Um, have a great day. Thanks so much. Thank you, Haley. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Jesse.